this part kind of started as a problem. This part started because there was illegal dumping and illegal activity that was occurring on Linwood Road, which was right here, and also around as you go around Woodley. So people would come and bring their trash and dump it in this area and just leave it, tires, all, you know, all kinds of equipment. And we were constantly having to deal with sanitation to come pick up what other people had left and clean up where other people weren't cleaning up. So this is where we got together and I want to give credit to Jackie Haberman and Diane Thurman. We sat down at a table one day at Jackie's house and started talking about the issues with, with what we were dealing with over here on Woodley and Linwood and said, what could we do? So we explored different um, uh, possibilities together and then we went to Heath and Rob. And the inspiration that comes from this park is basically that was the catalyst that started things rolling. Um, Rob started dropping ideas out of his mouth like gumballs in a machine. I was like, yeah, yeah, let's go, come on, yeah. And we ended up with this beautiful park. And I don't think anyone can deny that there's not a neighborhood in Savannah, Georgia that would not want what you're looking at right here in their neighborhood. Now I want to tell you something else and this is kind of a pitch sale for some of you. I know that there's a debate and there's a rub with Splost, but this is $450,000 of city investment from that penny of that sales tax that's invested back in our neighborhood. And this is also the reason, in my opinion, why you should consider uh, supporting SPLOST in the future because for us to do these type of projects in the neighborhoods and the additional things that are needed including pavings including sidewalks and all the other things we need that extra penny and 60 percent of that extra penny 60 percent of this development from this park was paid for by people who don't live in Savannah it was paid for by the penny on sales tax so when you look at the 400 $50,000 investment with that 40 car plus parking lot over there. I want to make sure people see that parking lot. Uh, if you look at that investment and you consider the fact that a quarter of a million dollars of that was invested by people from uh, Salem, people from Chicago, people from Seattle that will never ever walk in this park. But their penny while they were here helped us to do things like this consider that when you're considering the vote for SPLOS because it makes a huge difference in what we can and cannot do in this community. Now, I want to tell you about some of the obstacles that we faced. And um, my Mayor Pro Tem, Carol Bell, said this is not going to be your normal sermon. And no, ma'am, it's not. Uh, it's not going to be my normal sermon about District 6. But it is going to show you the ingenuity and the intelligence and the brilliance that we have on the city staff in order to help make things happen. So when we talked about dog parks and we talked about playgrounds and we talked about other things that we could do, we ran into obstacles with FEMA. For example, we used those dollars to buy this land, but they said you can't build nothing on it. So they wouldn't even let us put a fence they wouldn't even let us put a, put a fence for those dog parks on the FEMA lot. So somewhere in Rob's circle and Heath's circle and others, they said, let's take the road up. So the dog parks are actually built in the roadway of the old Linwood Road. So think about that. We took this road up to make those dog parks possible. So we put the playground, um, actually was allowed, I believe, Right, Rob? Yep. I hope it's not illegally placed. <laughs> and you know, the other things that you see, and what we came up with was we left a beautiful natural park with strategically placed assets that followed the law and allowed us to redevelop this FEMA um, uh, trash site into something that's valuable and beautiful for the neighborhood. Now, there are three entrances to this park. The main entrance to this park is off of Windsor Road, you turn at Woodley, and you come down a half of a, a block and you turn right into a 40 plus lot parking lot. Now on the far western side is Linwood Road. There are a couple parking spaces over there. 
Not a lot, but a couple. And then on the Woodley Road, which is further around, there's a lot that it, we're going to see how this works out. And if we need additional parking, we will make considerations for the FEMA lot over there to provide additional parking. I will tell you that I've done, uh, this is the fourth city park in Windsor Forest that we've dedicated in 20 years. We will dedicate the fifth city park on Friday um, for a man who believed in trees and loved trees in Windsor, and we'll get more into that on Friday. But this park is special. And this park is special because all of our parks have something unique that, that they offer. First of all, for the old people that are over 20, they're swings. I want you to understand what I just said. For the old people over 20, they're swings. For the little people under, there's swings and slides over there too. So there's something for families. There's something for multi-generational use out here. You have a quarter acre walking, a uh, quarter acre uh, walking trail. I want to tell you something special about that walking trail. If you look at those pa at that pathway, that's not normal concrete. And me and Heath and Rob went back and forth and they had to show me these little things and everything else because um, they were trying to take my money to build these, to build these uh, walkways right here. So that's the most precious concrete that ever was laid because the water can go through it. And FEMA made it. We could not put regular concrete on there, so we had to use, what's it called? What's the fan? Water pervious? Uh, water pervious concrete. So. I want y'all to, um, this is not a Berlin Wall situation or anything, so don't chip it up. And if it does chip, don't steal it. Call us. We'll fix it somehow. But, uh, but as you walk the quarter of acre through here, you can see the beautiful vegetation. Uh, it will be a natural park. And as Heath has reminded us, there will be some challenges in maintaining this park because it is so large. But uh, we'll cross those bridges as we get to them, and we'll work on that. But you got the dog parks, two dog parks. Now, one thing I learned about dog parks is that people become very owner intense about a dog park. That's my dog park. So we are going, is the signage up? If not, there will be signage up. Um, there is a small dog park and there is a big dog park. If there is anyone here who does not know what a small dog is compared to a big dog, Please educate and help them understand what it is when they bring their little dog or their big dog to the dog park. Because you put your small dogs in the small dog park and you put your big dogs in the big dog park, not vice versa. Okay, it's got a water feature. It's got all kinds of objects in there for the dogs to play on and do everything else with. So this is, uh, you know, two dog parks. And I proudly say that it, they are the only municipal dog park south of Duran Avenue. Do y'all get me on that? South of Duran Avenue. This is an investment on the south side, south of Duran Avenue. So these dog parks are going to get intense use. But what's the beauty of that is I found, and the research shows, that people who are attracted to a dog park normally take an ownership interest in that dog park, and they will help clean it up. They will help monitor it, police it. They will let you know very quickly if something's wrong with it. And that is key, communicating with police officials that I see here, uh, director of police mentor, assistant chief Gavin and others to help us control uh, any type of illegal or threatening activity that is occurring in this park. Now, you got the playground, you got a picnic tables out here for a picnic area. so. This is a beautiful six acre addition that a quarter of a million dollars was paid for by people you'll never meet, never see, but came here and left a little bit of their money and we used that money to do something great. Now, is it done? No. So before we start chattering and everything else, there's still additional things that we're tweaking out here. There are still additional things that we will be adding out here. There is a phase two to this program. And phase two will have other amenities to it. If you'll look to, I guess you're right over here, you'll see that that's the Windsor Canal. Underneath you is 90 million or $70 million worth of drainage pipes that drain all of the water in this neighborhood out through these canals and out to the Vernon River estuaries. So as you see, we have a future opportunity for a greenway 
that goes all the way to the Vernon River. So if you could connect this walking trail, which is a quarter of a mile, and eventually connect it with a walking trail that maybe goes all the way to White Bluff Road, you then have a significant greenway out here, um, beltway to say, that will take you all the way to our beautiful river overlook that's um, maybe a half a mile or so that way. So those are considerations that we are considering. If you look, there's a lot that's over there, that's Juniper Circle. We're looking at maybe a future uh, additional playground on that side with a parking area over there with a bridge that spans over and connects all of the parks in right in here. Now, that is extraordinary in itself, but one of the things that's being looked at, you remember the old pool, the old skate park that was on Windsor Road? It's been raised. You know that we have a lot of young families and children that are moving back into this neighborhood and they're, they're stress on the elementary school and the high school for space now. At some point in the future, the largest senior center on the south side and in, in the city's network is going to be pushed out of the school facility over there and we're going to have to have a place for seniors and for kids to recreate and meet up and, and do the things that they need to do. So that site where the old pool was and the old house that had its storied past next to it was purchased by the city and that would be a future site with of course Splost and future funding put aside for a multi-generational regional center that would connect that would be for seniors, uh, children, uh, teens, and would offer a diversity of programming to impact this whole community and the whole south side connect it with this extraordinary six acre park and the phase two project that could go out here so you're looking at really a a, um, a, a potential for the future of what we want our centers to kind of be and look at where you can recreate learn live do everything that you need to right in the middle of a community and this is it so with that said, uh, those are what we have uh, accomplished and put together here. I could not have done that. I mean, I visioned it, um, but they built it and they put the pieces together. And Jackie and Diane, our meeting that spawned it. And then on my father's birthday on February the 6th, we broke ground here. We broke ground here and began that on February the 6th and here we are April the uh, April <laughs> October the 24th and we have this beautiful park that's completed we would have been here October the 10th but that little hurricane thing we have to deal with every year kind of sidetracked us a couple of weeks um, but we could not have done that without all of those people working together and I certainly could not have done it without the support of the mayor and the pro tem and the other aldermen who voted unanimously to make this happen. So I uh, thank them for their role because without that we couldn't have done it. It would have just been money in the bank. But there are two people that I am going to take a personal privilege and call up and thank them. And I'm going to make them come up here and that's Heath Lloyd. Come on Heath. I want you to see this guy. He hides in the sidelines. And Rob Hernandez. Come on up. These are you guys who helped make it happen right here. Um, they, had, they had to take the phone calls, they had to take the midnight emails and everything else. But we end up with a wonderful, wonderful uh, improvement for our community and something that's going to outlast every one of us standing up here. So, you know, generations from now people will still be enjoying this park and it was built on the visions of people who are no longer there. And I believe that I wanted to personally thank Heath because Heath and I have been here 10 or 15 times and uh, and I want to thank Rob because we probably talked about this 20 or 30 times and and you know it's just amazing because when you look at the simple things that these guys do that make such an extraordinary difference in our lives you don't even realize it I mean I turned on this street yesterday because I've been hammering him about a parking lot and somebody had trimmed that tree right there and the, just the trimming of that tree opened up the view corridor here and made it look unbelievable. Unbelievable, just the trimming of a tree. And of course, he built that parking lot in one day. So um, that was uh, extraordinary. So 
I just want to say thank you to all of the staff, and I know that there were other members of the staff. I know I, I, I don't think I ever passed by here or came out here and videoed or, or, or took photos that I didn't see a staff worker working somewhere or, or, a, or a city truck that was in here doing something. So thank you to he, thank you to Rob, thank you to all the staff and city, uh, city, city team members who have played a role. Thank you to the residents. Thank you to the residents who have already taken an ownership interest in this park. Um, I will tell you, like I said, this is our fourth city park in Windsor Forest, and you would think that we had never had one before. That's, uh, it's just extraordinary at the, uh, at, the, uh, at, at the interest in this park. And, you know, we've got a wonderful asset called Tribble Park with the lake and a walking trail and a, an amphitheater. We will be having a, our first fall festival in Windsor Forest on November the 3rd from 12 to 5 and it will have live entertainment, food, uh, police and fire uh, displays, a bouncy house for the kids, and of course uh, live music from Bucky and Barry. That are our, it's our first performance in the um, live amphitheater. So it's going to be a great day. So we hope that all of you residents and all of you friends of Windsor can come and uh, enjoy a great day. I do want to acknowledge uh, the Windsor Forest Neighborhood Association in the back has set up a uh, table and it's got some treats on it, um, some treats for two-legged people and some treats for four-legged dogs. Um, I do want to also acknowledge Bentley's Pet Stuff who, without being asked, called us up on the phone and said we want to provide some goodie bags for the dogs for the park. So all of you with dogs, please make sure you grab a bag and if you can, there's four locations of Bentley's Pet Stuff located throughout the city of Savannah. Please uh, try to um, support them and thank them if you are happen to be out there for them supporting us with this great investment. With that, I think I've talked enough. I want to call Michelle back up and let her take us to the next part of the program. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Thomas. Let's give him a round of applause. And now it is my pleasure to welcome our city manager, Rob Hernandez. Good morning. I'll keep my comments very short. I normally don't speak at these types of events, but I think uh, this morning uh, I'm so motivated by what we're doing here today that I wanted just two minutes to, to be able to say a couple of words. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to all of you that live here on the South Side and in the Windsor Forest community and for coming out here this morning and for showing that you care about your neighborhood and you care about your city. I also want to thank all of you for supporting SPLOST. And as Tony mentioned, you know, we're going through the conversation. And in fact, tonight here on the south side, Tony is hosting a Alderman Thomas, I'm sorry, is holding a town hall meeting in which we're going to get some input from you on potential spot spots related projects moving forward into the into the future. I want to thank Alderman Thomas first for bringing this idea to our attention about a year ago. We did, in fact, meet out here and he shared his vision for this site and he said he wanted a dog park. And we talked about it a little bit, we negotiated, we debated, we argued a little bit, and then we said, okay, Alderman Thomas, we think we can do it. The easy way for us would have been to hire a consultant, a landscape architect, various firms to come out here to design and build the park. But the deal that we made with Alderman Thomas was that this had to be a project designed, delivered, and carried through by city employees. We wanted this to be a city only project. Now understanding that we couldn't put in the specialized concrete and we had to go out and get a contractor for that. Just about, I would say 90% of what was left over on this site in terms of the design, the artwork that you see here, all of that was done by city employees and SCAD volunteers. And so I think it's important that you know that because we went to Mr. Lloyd and Tony, uh, Alderman Thomas is absolutely right. We drove Heath crazy, constantly calling him out here. We, I know we drove Gordon Denny crazy and his staff at, at the city of Savannah Greenscapes department came out, came out here and beautified this area for, um, for this park. But again, it was the effort and the hard work and the ingenuity of the City of Savannah employees that made this park what it is today. So I want to thank 
uh, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Denny, and all the employees of our Public Works Department for seeing this uh, this park through. And lastly, again, I want to thank the city the city council because ultimately, yes, it was Alderman Thomas's idea, and he drove it, he championed it. But ultimately, we had to bring it back to the other eight members of the city council, and the and the other eight members said, "We think this is a great project. We want you to work on it, and we're going to approve it." And as we've said before with Splost, a penny adds up. And you can see 468,000 pennies, no, more than that. I guess 468 million pennies went into this, into this project from Splost. So thank you again. Enjoy your day and, and enjoy your park. Thank you. I would now like to welcome Neighborhood Association President Jackie Haberman. Oh, it's so, we are so lucky out here, this wonderful, wonderful space. And you know, when you stand up here, you have to look right in the sun. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank our Alderman, Tony Thomas, and when he and Diane, and it was Joyce Conrad and I that walked this when it was, it was like a jungle. Anyway, and he get, showed all his ideas and, and wanted input from all of us. But we also want to thank all the city staff, and I know what you've gone through <laughs> with all those meetings. But it was also productive, and to have a multi-generational park that we can all enjoy. And I don't think it's just going to be our five neighborhoods out here that are in the Windsor Forest area. These people will come from out co out Coffee Bluff, especially for the doggy park. But I, I'm not going to say any more this morning other than it's a great morning, it's bright and sunny, and I hope the weather holds for our next park opening Friday, the Tom Fulton Jr. Park. Thank you all for coming. At this time, we'll have the uh, city leadership as well as um, some of the neighborhood association members who were a um, big part of this project come over and unveil the sign, and then we will move over and cut the ribbon. I want to um, also acknowledge somebody here from our uh, neighborhood association that will be playing a huge role in our parks out here. Uh, he's fairly new to our neighborhood, but he's joined the board and um, he has already, him and his wife have already made a huge difference. In fact, they set that tent up here for the neighborhood association today and that's Chuck Petty and his wife, Chuck Waven, he, he's our kind of official park ranger for uh, all of our park system out here and he lets us, uh, he stays in close contact with the board which then lets the city know about issues that are going on. So thank you Chuck, thank you to your wife for all that y'all have done to help with this today. <laughs> 